We associate youth with potential and it's just sort of insinuated in our culture, in our language, and how we perceive ourselves that that potential and those good things are withering down and going away the older we get. That's the story that we've been told time and time again. So why wouldn't we be afraid of getting older? Social media, it's a very easy place to justify all of our fears. It has made me compare myself in ways that I never have before. It's addicting to have that justified in your head. And what are we comparing ourselves to? What is that thing that we want so bad? We feel as though time is running out, but how are we actually using the time that we are being given? Why do we feel this way? Why do we feel this sense of urgency? It's a big wake up call for myself because the amount of hours in a day that I waste involving myself in the exact behavior that is holding me back hi guys i am here today to chat about honestly a sad topic i'm all cheery and happy because i'm in a good mood today but this topic is a little bit nostalgic it's a little sad it's a little sentimental i have been thinking a lot about missing childhood and missing a younger version of myself while i've been reflecting on all of this so many people around me you guys everybody has expressed feeling the sort of same sense of pressure and fear of getting older. Young people fearing getting older, but also my dad is 67 and he is stepping into a phase of his life that he is getting older. I think everybody knows what this fear and this pressure feels like no matter what stage they're at in their lives. I was inspired because one of you messaged me saying if I could talk about the fear of getting older Older. It has been such a prevalent thing in my life recently, but especially this month. And like I said, with so many people I know also feeling the same way and feeling this sense that the clock is ticking, like feeling this pressure as though every single day time is running out, like we don't have enough time and there is something that we must prove by a certain point. And it is really scary to go through a lot of life transitions and changes and feel feel as though we have to be at a certain point and matching up to this and comparing ourselves to this person and that person and I said I was going to do this by this age but I haven't yet and I'm making a very special arrangement today. It is one of my best friend's birthdays tomorrow and I wanted to make her a beautiful arrangement with colors that really reminded me of her. Yeah, so we feel like the pressure is on. At least I have. It feels like time is kind of running out, like there's some sort of rush. I think we feel that way not only because we want to make the best decision at the best time, figure out our lives, build independence, take on all of our responsibilities, but also the world is kind of crashing down in front of us. Um, and I don't even necessarily know where to begin with that. Witnessing crisis in the world around us. We all have a responsibility. Sometimes when we are exerting as much as we can in trying to make a difference, but we don't see a difference being made, it can be really disheartening. The United States presidential election is happening right now as we speak. Um, probably by the time this video is out, we know who our president is. And let's bring it back down now to just a personal level of feeling as though we need to get our lives together and figure out everything right now. That pressure is so overwhelming to our minds and bodies that it keeps us stuck and it keeps us stagnant in a cycle of fear and dissatisfaction in feeling like we're not doing enough. I think the first thing to acknowledge is why do we feel this way? Why do we feel this sense of urgency? Agency, feeling responsible for the amount of change that we can contribute and are we doing enough with the state of the world and watching what is going on around us, whether we are in that, whether we are watching from afar, one human being cannot change the whole world, 
But yes, our small contribution and our actions can collectively. And I think that the most productive use of our time is figuring out how we can make a change in our immediate environment. What contribution can we make to changing what is right around us? Even if that's taking care of ourselves. And I know that that sounds, okay, whatever, when so much crisis is happening, how can you think about self-care? But at the end of the day, if you as an individual is part of the collective change that needs to happen, you need to be in check. You need to make sure that you are okay so that you can deliver the action necessary. Because if we are depleting ourselves constantly and making ourselves miserable and sick in the head with everything that is going on, we're not going to be able to change it. So I think that it is very important that we prioritize our health, our well-being, the well-being of our community, our relationships, the people around us. And I can only be a part of that change and that action if I am doing what's necessary to support myself to support those around me. Okay, so that's, you know, maybe one of the reasons why this sense of urgency exists. Now, something else that creates that anxious sense of urgency and feeling like time is running out and makes me afraid of getting older is comparison. That comparison exists anywhere, but I think that the strongest, most addictive vessel for it is social media. And I'm not going to sit here and tell us all that we have to delete Instagram and all these things that we hear again and again, brain rot, doom scrolling, all of that. We know that it's not good for us, but I used to have a decent relationship with social media. I feel like I sort of used it a reasonable amount, but now the more and more that my work is becoming social media and I I am engaging more with the platforms that I want to put my art on and have these discussions with you guys, I have naturally just fallen into comparing myself. I am putting things into the world that I'm proud of and that I want to share, but that is really only a certain aspect of me. Like people don't really know what's going on. Why is it so addicting is my question. It has made me compare myself in ways that I never have before. Like it's making me feel as though I need to live up to a certain standard. It feels like I'll never be good enough or I'll never be what I'm trying to live up to. And that kind of plays into the fear of getting older because if I don't feel good now, how am I gonna feel in a few years whenever I've lost more of my youth or opportunity or potential? We associate youth with potential and it's just sort of insinuated in our culture and our language and how we perceive ourselves that that potential and those good things are withering down and going away the older we get. That's the story that we've been told time and time again. So why wouldn't we be afraid of getting older? Okay, also I just got my frog pin from the garage and I pricked my finger with it, but look how sweet this is already looking. I'm just, I'm loving this. I have kind of created this self-fulfilling prophecy with my social media use where I go on there and I start comparing myself to other people naturally, even if I don't want to. And it starts to bring up my insecurities and where I don't feel like I'm good enough and sort of what's stopping me and the gap between where I am and what I want. That in itself, that reminder of insecurity and that reminder that I'm not where I want to be is addicting in itself because when we have insecurities and we have fears and doubts about ourselves and our capabilities, we want to justify those so that they can become real. Because at the end of the day, your insecurities are all made up in your head. You're the one who is justifying them to yourself. Our insecurities are relying on us to justify them. And social media, it's a very easy place to justify all of our fears. It's addicting to have that justified in your head. And it, the crazy thing about it is the more and more time we spend on social media, that is time that we could have been spending on improving the things that would have made us feel like we are closer to our goals or that we are good enough or just building our confidence in general to make us feel like healthy, good, happy, stable, successful, confident individuals. But instead we're using all that time to continue 
to justify our insecurities, to continue to check on it too, like that dopamine of getting a notification. It's all playing into that. It's all playing into that perception of ourselves that we're trying to display and what we're comparing ourselves to. Do I think that social media can be used for good? Yes, but only if we know how to use it that way, which I don't think that it's built to be user-friendly for our minds and our insecurities, especially when we're coming of age trying to do enough with our time and make sure that we use our youth and our potential and all these things the best we can. As human beings, it is satisfying to fulfill something, whether that is a goal or a thought or an insecurity or a need. And social media becomes food for our comparison, for our insecurity, for that lingering thing in our mind that is making us feel as though we're not good enough. These hydrangeas need to be in the water. Oh my gosh. Watch how these hydrangeas are all sad and dramatic and wilted and how they're going to change by the end of this video. Once you get them in that water, they perk right back up. Social media has been that type of self fulfilling prophecy for me of feeling insecure and bad about myself and wanting to continue to sort of justify that. Like I said, I think social media can be used for good in the hands of the people that know how to do it. And I'm not necessarily one of those people yet. I'm learning to be. Needing constant, instant gratification bleeds into other areas of our lives. We can get that on our phone through social media, but then what else are you gonna wanna get it from? I have friends that I haven't talked to in a while and all they've seen is my social media and they think that I'm doing great when reality that's maybe not the case. We are putting out a version that we want other people to perceive of us. And then we're comparing our own reality and how we truly feel inside to that. And it just doesn't make sense because we're not really comparing ourselves to each other. We're comparing ourselves to a perception that we're sharing with the world. Because what I'm putting out here is real, but it also like I put makeup on, I brushed my hair, I you know bought these pretty flowers. This is just an aspect of my life that you're seeing. You're never really going to see everybody's core reality on the place that we're spending so much of our time comparing what we're seeing to our reality. It just, it doesn't make sense because it's not an equal playing field. However you're feeling inside and what you're comparing to what other people are putting out there, that's not really the same level. Like, oh, you don't really know what they're going through mentally. So before you compare yourself to whatever they're putting out there, think about that. My fear of getting older is definitely emphasized and kept alive by my social media use. I don't have it all figured out and it feels like other people do, especially on Instagram and TikTok and places where people are showing the parts of their lives that are thriving and you see people making money like TikTok shop, all these like weird instant gratifying things that we feel like we need to grasp while the time allows us to. When it comes to enjoying media and art and entertainment and spreading awareness, social media is a very powerful tool, but that power is easily canceled out by how addictive and how much room for comparison exists there. All of the good things about social media are easily canceled out by how easy it is to really abuse. It's awesome when people are able to just cut that whole thing out of their lives, but sometimes that's not necessarily realistic. When so much of our life is on social media, and I think learning how to have a healthy relationship with it is what is gonna save me in the long run. So I've been reflecting on that recently and trying to figure out how can I replace that with doing something that will actually get me to the point that I'm comparing myself to. If we see somebody posting something about their amazing lives, we're perceiving that as, oh, they must be so happy, or oh, wow, their body looks so good, or oh, look at that yacht they're on, they 
must have so much money. Like we are, we are perceiving it a certain way, right? Like we are interpreting the media that is in front of us. So if we see something and think, oh wow, somebody has so much money and they're so healthy and all these things, we're just kind of telling ourselves what we want and what we think we're so far away from. Like if I'm comparing myself to somebody and feeling bad about it, it's because I think that I don't have that and I don't think that I can have that. Therefore, I'm comparing myself and putting myself down. But really, the thing that I'm comparing myself to could be so far from what that person is actually experiencing. Whoever posted that, they might not even be feeling those things. They might be comparing themselves to the same things. We don't know what's real and what's not. But what is valuable to take from that is what are we comparing ourselves to? What is that thing that we want so bad? And how can we be spending our time to actually give us that fulfillment and that satisfaction. If there is a change that we want to see in ourselves and we think that other people have accomplished that change or they are that change and we're comparing ourselves to that and that's what we really want so bad, we want to be that. Do you think that's gonna happen from scrolling on your phone? It's just so, it's so backwards and that's why I was saying it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, oh, I want this thing so bad. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here and continue to make myself feel bad about it. When you're doing that, you're stealing away from the valuable, precious time that we have to be actually moving towards those changes. How are we using our time? We feel as though time is running out, but how are we actually using the time that we are being given? It's a big wake up call for myself because the amount of hours in a day that I waste involving myself in the exact behavior that is holding me back, it is so counterintuitive. And I feel like we keep ourselves in this trap because it's hard to wake up from it. It's hard to have that awareness, let alone the discipline to replace those habits with something else. The reason that we feel so afraid that time is running out is because yes, it quite literally is when we are wasting all of it doing something that is stealing from us. And like I said, social media, if you know how to use it productively, then I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking to myself when I am being unproductive in these ways. The more we continue to do the same things, we will continue to stay in the same place. And that does ignite a lot of fear and urgency around time running out. We have to refocus our valuable time and efforts and energy into transforming our lives in the ways that we want. And I think that we can find a lot of valuable information when it comes to what makes us feel bad on social media and what we are comparing ourselves to because it shows us what our real goals are and what we feel as though we're not. Once we pull that info and we can use that, we can really start making some real change in our lives. So, for example, I want to be enriched in my thoughts and my creativity and my ideas. I don't get that from being on Instagram. But I've tried carrying a book with me everywhere I go and like having my phone on top of the book so that any time that I feel, or having my phone like inside of the book, so that any time I lift it up to just like get that dopamine and scroll mindlessly, I will have the book right there to remind me hey, we could actually be enriching our brain in this instead. Getting older just sort of symbolizes less time and less opportunity and just all this scarcity. It makes sense why we would feel that way when we are involving ourselves in habits that just create more stress and pressure and fear. And maybe it doesn't seem like these habits are doing that on the surface level, but maybe deep down they are eating away at your time that you're so afraid of losing. Maybe your habits are reinforcing this idea of lack that you have about yourself or how far away you are from whatever it is that you want. The good news is we have time. It's just how do we use it? Are we going to use it to our advantage? Are we gonna use it for our health? Are we gonna use it for our well being? Or are we gonna be afraid of it, therefore waste it? So yeah, that's my little social media spiel um, because I think social media is a huge factor in why I'm afraid of getting older. Because when I'm on there, I'm like, okay, I have not accomplished anything, I guess, if this person is doing this and this person's doing that. And 
I am not good enough. Having that reinforced every single day from something that you literally have on you from the moment you wake up, from the moment you go to sleep, yes, that is going to make us afraid of getting older and losing our time and losing our opportunities and things because getting on there makes us feel like we've already lost them. And also as women, we've been taught that our youth is where our worth comes from. And the more that that is taken from us, the more that our worth is taken from us. So it makes sense why we feel this attachment to the idea of time and youth and that it's being taken away because we feel as though maybe our worth is also being taken away in that sense. At least that's how I felt. Seeing the world respond differently to you. For example, I don't know if any of you have faced this, but like when I was younger, a lot of my family members would think I was so adorable and treat me with so much love and oh, and I uh, just be so sweet and very loving. And then it just felt like all of a sudden, like something drastically changed when I got older. I was now treated as hmm oh yeah, what are you doing with your life? Hmm, yeah, you look really bad in that outfit actually. Hmm, are you gaining weight? Hmm. Just this insane shift of judgment and like comparison and weirdness that did not exist when I was a child. And I'm still the same person. Like I still feel like that little girl in my heart. So it's confusing to be treated in such a way that isn't, the same as it used to be, but that's just one of the examples of the changes that I've seen. Not only we are changing, but the world around us that is interacting with us is changing as well. That kind of brings us all the way back to what we were talking about earlier with watching the world change and watching so much happen, but watching it in our personal lives too. This grueling process of losing my grandparents started to take place. That was a big slap in the face of I'm no longer a child anymore. Just all of these little realizations building upon each other of our worlds changing and aging with us. I don't know how many of you were One Direction fans, but like I said, we're going all over the board here. There's so many different things that factor into aging and the changes that we witness, but this is kind of a pop culture one that really affected me because all of my passion and excitement and lust for life formed through being a fangirl. Liam Payne from One Direction passed away. And all of that has reminded a lot of people how much they loved One Direction and why did they love One Direction and how did that boy band build the person that they are today. If our foundation was built from the passion that we had towards external things like our favorite boy band or whatever we could be excited and passionate about and channel all of our love and joy and just pure excitement and infatuation into something outside of us as young kids. Like when we were doing that, we were building our personalities. We were building friendships. I have friendships that are solely because of One Direction and the connection we made from that. One Direction was not just a boy band. We learned how to be excited and passionate about something through loving them. And that was my biggest passion at that age and it affected my relationships, my friendships, and who I was as a person. It helped me build my interests and show me how to be passionate. And we think as we get older and we're no longer One Direction fans anymore and everything has changed, whatever, we think that it wouldn't affect us so much. But when that was such a vital part of our foundation and our upbringing, of course it's gonna hurt when we realize that it is no longer there and losing one of the members especially at such a young age like he's less than 10 years older than me like that is in itself just a very scary concept but like losing somebody who was a part of that thing we loved so much this is no longer what it used to be one direction and what that was and the magic that it gave to us that no longer exists now in the present moment of course nobody can take that magic away and take that foundation that we built as young girls away but now it is actually 
forever changed and gone. And of course it already was, but it just makes it that much more official that we are no longer little girls. Having your worth so attached to your youth and having your idea of your potential and capabilities and opportunities so attached to your youth, the concept of time attached with your youth, having a reminder that you are no longer that and you will never be that again, call me dramatic, but I think it is really hard. And it's something that I know a lot of us have been feeling, whether that is through grieving One Direction or just simply going through the transitions and changes of getting older and seeing how the world is also changing in general and in the way that it's responding to us. And I feel like it all kind of boils down to that feeling as though we had something that we don't anymore and that it's continuing to be taken from us. But like I said, that couldn't be farther from the truth. We are always given time. We are always given opportunities and potential no matter what. And it's so easy to attach our worth to things like youth and the idea of not having enough time. And I think that the only way out of that cycle and that trap and what we've been taught taught is building up our sense of worth in what we are doing and how we are spending the time that we are being given. What can we do to remind ourselves of our worth? Because we have it. We are worthy right here, right now. We are no less worthy than we were when we were younger. We still have the ability to take care of that inner child, to feel confident and worthy in who we are right now. And we can use the time that we are given to nurture that and to take care of that and to be the people that we want to be. And the other night I was in bed about to go to sleep and I had been reflecting on these things that whole evening and just feeling really sad as though I was lacking something or like I no longer had something that I had when I was little or when I was youthful and that things had been taken away from me and that they will only continue to be taken away. Just this story that I was telling myself and it makes sense why I was telling it to myself as we've discussed all of this, I was feeling really sad and a few tears were falling from my eyes as I was about to go to sleep. I started just picturing my younger self and all of those versions of myself. Like I was thinking of my little, little self as a baby and a toddler and when I was in elementary school and when I was that fangirl and when I was a teenager, just all of those versions of me were coming to mind. It almost felt as though they were coming to comfort me and like they were still there. I don't know how to explain this necessarily, but I could just like hear my voice, like how I used to sound and what my voice sounded like as a kid. That voice was saying something and she was saying, I've wanted to be you my whole life. And I was able to go to sleep after that. Like I said earlier, so much of the time we are so focused on what's being taken away from us and what we don't have and time is running out and I don't have this thing and I will continue to have less and less of it. But what happens when we start to focus on what we really do have? What really is here in front of us? What time are we being given in these moments that we are spending worrying about it not being here? But those little versions, they, they weren't thinking that. They were always so excited for the future and for who I was becoming. And the exciting thing is all of that is still within me and now more. I am the person that I wanted to be when I was little. Even if there are still things I want to work on and things that I want to accomplish, I have done things that that little girl in me that I'm wishing I still was wanted so bad and wanted to experience and wanted to grow into. I just need to recenter my focus and make sure that I am taking care of the time that I'm given and appreciating that time too. I wanted to read you guys a little poem that I'm working on. By no means is it done. It's something that I just felt inspired to write while I was reflecting on all of this. So it's a poem that I wrote called I Miss the Old Me. I miss the old me, the one with the little round face and pink cheeks, the girl with muddy knees and grass-stained jeans, the one who when it was all too much could be carried right to sleep, the one who would scream to the top of her lungs yet had the world's unconditional love, 
I miss her silliness and the characters she'd create what I would do to be her for a day when getting older was so far away, the biggest decision to make was fairy or mermaid, when the neighborhood swimming pool was bigger than the ocean, I miss the girl who was hilariously outspoken, her fire and how ferociously her little heart would beat as her feet ran at the speed of light down the hill and back. The girl who played until she collapsed in her small bed and slept so sound. The girl who ate until her belly was full and round, who lived inside of her princess gown, always on the hunt for a good climbing tree, her contagious laughter and sweet buck teeth. The girl who filled diaries and diaries on end. What could she have been contemplating back then? I miss the girl whose grandparents were young and still here. I miss when my biggest fears were haunted houses and thunderstorms. I miss cartwheels and gym mats, catching fireflies in my hands, recess and racing and cupcakes and crafts, counting down the seconds until my dad would pick me up, when I could see the world from above his head and on top of his shoulders, playing with worms, finding four-leaf clovers. I miss when the only loss she knew was the sun going down or losing a tooth. I miss when her fantasies were all yet to be had. I miss visualizing my first kiss and holding hands with my crush. I miss the girl whose cheeks would flush when she decided to be brave. I miss when relatives would display adoration, not judgment. When all problems were solved with my mom's hugs and a trip to the park. I miss making shadow puppets in the dark on my ceiling and never knowing the feeling of regret. I miss the girl with a kingdom in her head, making friends with the monsters under her bed. I miss the girl who didn't have to try, who never worried about keeping her passions alive, the girl without the fear stored inside her body. I try to remember the lightheartedness that she taught me, but I can't help feeling heavy at the thought of what once was. I miss the old me and it's because it's easy to look past the magic she made, the spark she ignited lighting up the place. It isn't until I close my eyes that I can see her face and begin to remember her voice that's trying to reach me closer than ever. I set down my heartache and run to go get her. She looks at me in awe like she's been waiting for me forever. I crouch down and open my arms wide. She falls into them and holds me tight. I let myself cry and tell her I was missing her tonight. She places her little hands in mine, bringing one up to wipe my eyes and tells me I've wanted to be you my whole life. Yeah, sad but beautiful. Sad but beautiful and that's what life is, isn't it? Sad but beautiful. Um, and yeah, guys, that is what I've been thinking about when it comes to my youth. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of fear around change and around growing older. I hope that me sharing my own experience with it brought you a little bit of comfort in knowing that you are not alone with these fears and we are on this journey together of figuring out how to find the beauty in the midst of it all and help ourselves come back to that truth of we are worthy right now we have what we need right now we don't need to fear the future or crave the past we are here right now in this moment what are we going to do with it Thank you.